I am, even though I live in the Northern Rivers, I am a born and bred Queenslander. Uh, grew up in Townsville. Any Townsville people here? North Queensland people? No? That's not in the Bible, Ross. That's, uh, that's, I think one more word from Alan and we should remove him from the auditorium. I think, can I just shout out Dave? I mean, you are the most secure man I know. Seriously. I, I, you know, the, your confidence and um, ease and grace to get up and lead us in worship this morning. Uh, nothing but admiration for you, my friend. Thank you so much. Because let me tell you, it's not easy being up there looking back at you. Okay, we give some of the, the worst um, reactions uh, back to song leaders, you know, the, you know, while they're pouring their heart out to worship and the, the finger up the nose, whatever it might be, lots of things happen. Um, it is great to be with you. My wife sends her apologies. She was coming, but at the last moment, someone pulled out of something in our home church back at the Gold Coast she had to fill in for. So um, this morning, if you're wondering, I had a, I've got a little operation on the side of my head here. Being from Townsville, some may say I had my second head cut from my... <laughs> That is not the reason. Had a, I grew up playing cricket in the sun, and we all know as you get older, you go for your skin checks and find all little kind of nasties growing there. So I had a basal cell carcinoma removed on Friday, uh, the second attempt. And nothing worse than getting that, can you come back again? We need to cut a little bit more. And so uh, hopefully they can do one that side and get a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a, a tuck while they're at it. So this morning, let me just share one thought with you and, um, and then allow you to enjoy this amazing weather. Winter in Lismore, and, uh, or wherever you may be from, it's just absolutely amazing. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 8 to 10, let me read it to you. It says this, So when Abraham became the father of Isaac, he circumcised him. Don't worry, guys, we're not talking about circumcision this morning. It's a great way to empty the church of men. He circumcised him on the eighth day. And the practice was continued when Isaac became the father of Jacob and when Jacob became the father of the 12 fathers of the Israelite nation. These patriarchs were jealous of their brother Joseph and they sold him to be a slave in Egypt. And then there are two words that we're going to unpack this morning. But God was with him and rescued him from all of his troubles. And God gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all of Egypt and put him in charge of the palace. But God, the word but is a, what they call a conjunction, a conjunction. Any teachers here? Yeah, a few teachers. A conjunction is a word that joins sentences or phrases together, like the word and, the word if, the word but. But this word but, unlike and or if, has a little bit more uh, power to it. Because when you use the word but, it almost uh, diminishes what you were going to say with what you are going to say. And so to be like, if I use an example, uh, uh, Alan is good, but Jackie is way better. So... <laughs> By me saying the but, straight away erodes anything great I was going to say about Alan and puts all the praise and focus upon Jackie. You know, if you're in a, in a meeting and you say, oh, that was a great idea, but normally we're not going to adopt that idea. We're going to go, well, it was a great idea, but there's certain things wrong with it. It's like when you meet someone and you say, oh, isn't so-and-so a great person? And you go, yeah, they are, but... What you are going to say will overpower and overshadow what that other person was said or has said about that person. So this word but contains a lot of power. The phrase but God, these two words, is used about 45 times all through Scripture. And to the left of every but God in Scripture appear some of the worst human atrocities characterised by disobedience and rebellion. To the left of every but God in the Bible is hopelessness, darkness and death. But to the right, following every but God, when you read through these 45 times, our readers of Scripture will find hope, light and life. Following God's intervention, the story of Scripture becomes one of grace, righteousness and justice. 
And if you've ever done a read on the, the life of Joseph, and if you haven't this morning, Genesis 37 for about 13 chapters, it's a fantastic read about a young guy that had everything going against him. And it's interesting, my son Jaden, he's 30 years of age, and um, uh, he's had a, a, a bit of a wild life. Uh, Jaden, uh, when he was about 17, we moved around a lot when he was a teenager, so he blames me for his problems of getting kicked out at school, multiple schools, uh, Christian schools, and um, which I don't blame him, I, I kind of, yeah, anyway, we won't go there. Uh, he followed, followed this pathway that was a little bit dark, uh, got into a bit of drug use and, and partying big time and travelled the world doing music. And uh, uh, Kathy and I have prayed for him ever since, obviously, as you do for all of your kids, you prayed earnestly for him, just for these but God moments. And about a year ago, he rang to say that he was taking up boxing. And uh, I don't know anything about the sport of boxing other than it looks like it really hurts. And he got involved in boxing, and it was one of those moments in life that as he joined, he found his tribe, he found his people, and his life has taken this radical uh, uh, U-turn, where now he, he doesn't take drugs, he doesn't use alcohol, he doesn't party anymore, he's in bed by 8.30 at night, he actually works down here doing insurance work on rebuilding and restoring homes. Uh, he doesn't party anymore, uh, he's eating healthy, he even went vegan for a while, that's how outrageous he got. And, and uh, uh, he's, he's boxing now and competing now, he's stripped off about 15 kilo from his life. And he said to me just recently, he, 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 and, and he's not following Jesus right now in, in the way that we know it. I think he is in his own way, but as the way we uh, 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 traditionally know it. And he said to me a couple of weeks ago, he came over our place, and he said, you know what, Dad, I, I realise that, that for my whole life I've been dodging God and running from God. And, and he goes, but some of the decisions I've made of late, they may not be Christian decisions, but they've made a radical difference in my life. And I don't know what you're facing this morning in your life, but this is what I want to tell you and encourage you in. All of us have a but God moment. And we have more than one but God moment. And I look at my son now, and, and I thank God that God, that leading up to the but God, there can be a lot of hardship, a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort for us as a mum and a dad and, his, and him as a son. But post the but God, there's little turns in people's lives, in your life and my life. It's amazing what joy it adds and what it brings. And so whatever you are facing this morning, you know, whether it be a, a physical challenge, can I encourage you, Scripture is full of but God's. And the doctors may have said, leading up to it may look pretty, pretty bleak, but post it, some amazing things can break out in your life. Maybe there's financial pressures, maybe family pressures, maybe spiritually you're just really dry. We've got to believe that God is still in the business of turning things around, that there are still but God moments. And if COVID has done anything to the church over the last three years, it's tried to extinguish that hope and faith that we have got in a God that is still actively involved in people's lives, bringing about good and not evil in people's lives, in people's hearts. And this guy, Joseph, a young 17-year-old thrown into prison, but God was with him. He was betrayed by his own family. He was thrown into circumstances beyond his control. The odds were against him, but God took him from the bottom and gave him a voice at the top. And if your whole world has been thrown into chaos, when we don't factor in God, then it can be very despairing. But when we factor in God, to whom all things are possible, then anything can happen. Great old Bible commentator Martin Lloyd-Jones said this, In these two words, but God, in and of themselves contain the whole gospel of Christ. Because no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter what addictions you have, no matter how many relationships you've been in, no matter how much trauma you've been through, no matter how many failures you have walked through, there can be a but God moment that can radically change your life. James Montgomery Boyce said this, if you understand these two words, but God, they will save your soul. If you recall them daily and live by them, they will transform your life completely. 
to give you a snapshot of the life of Joseph according to the but God. When you understand that if it wasn't for God, his brothers would never have been thrown, would never have thrown him into the pit. He would never have been bought by a slave trading tribe of Midianites. If he had never been bought by the Midianites, they would never have sold him at the market. If he had never been sold, this is Joseph, at the markets, then he could never have been bought by Potiphar. If he had never been bought by Potiphar, he would never have been brought back to Potiphar's household. If he was never brought back to Potiphar's household, he could never be uh, uh, hit on by Potiphar's wife. If he was never hit upon by Potiphar's wife, he would never have been thrown in prison, accused of rape. If he was never thrown in prison, he would never have known the lowest despair in life. If he hadn't have known that lowest despair of life, he would never have met the butler who was also in prison. If he had never met the butler in prison, he would never have had access to Pharaoh's palace. If he had never had access to Pharaoh's palace, he could never interpret Pharaoh's dream. If he couldn't interpret Pharaoh's dream, he would never have uh, 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 given the faith and the wisdom to save Egypt and his own household from the pending famine that was coming in the land. All of this hinged on a but God. And sometimes we look at our life and go, I cannot believe where my life is going. But let me encourage you, while you have breath in your lungs, there is a but God that can turn around your situation. You may be like a Joseph where you find yourself in a pit, but everything, and I believe this, we sang about it, Dave let us in it, everything works together for good for those who love Christ, who put their trust in Christ. Everything God can take, as He did in my life with my wife and I, a marriage that seemed to be on the rocks 25 years ago, and weave into us the, 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 the sadness and the, and the tragedy and the turmoil of walking through brokenness in our marriage to where we are as strong as ever, 36 years this year this year being married see only God can do that and when you look at the life of Joseph he is someone that you would have thought why God did that happen but all the way through God had a plan for his life I know God has a plan for my son's life and sometimes I can't see it but God but God but God Psalm 121 verse 4 says this, it says, Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. And sometimes it feels like God is not working in your life, but Scripture promises us. He doesn't sleep, He doesn't slumber, He hasn't forgotten you, He hasn't lost your number, He hasn't lost your, 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 your address, He knows exactly where you're at, He knows exactly what you need. In the end of the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, and Joseph finally reveals to his brothers who he is, that he is Joseph, the brother that they had sold into slavery. And and fear surrounds his brothers as Joseph unpacks his life and and they're afraid that he's going to to, uh, put them in in prison or have them killed. And in verse 20, he says this, As for you... You meant evil against me, but God, but God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. But God. I hear what Owen shared over communion this morning and very, very moving uh, as he shared about his sister and meeting other people that have lost loved ones. And when you have a but God, you look at people and the story of, of what Owen shared and you've got to wonder, I wonder how many people that Owen and his wife can influence and impact who themselves will walk through some dark times because of a but God moment. But God worked it together for good. But God. What if God is working together for good, the things in your life? What if? What if what you have looked at and thought that there is no hope But God is working all things together for good. You may not be able to see it. You may not be able to taste it or smell it at the moment. But God. And there are some days in my life, and I shared with the men recently when I was here, that I I had some mental health challenges about three years ago. And there were some dark moments in my life where where I didn't know which way was up. But God. But God works it together for good. I've since gone on and got a qualification as a counsellor and learnt new skills. You see, 
what the enemy has meant for bad in your life. That divorce that the enemy has meant for bad in your life, but God can turn something around for good. That tragedy that the enemy has meant evil in your life, God can turn it around for good. That childhood pain that maybe you're still feeling today, as, as terrible, as un, un, unethical and wrong as that was, but God can still turn it around for good. It is not too late. Thank God for the but gods. And I have personally met people and am very good friends with certain people who have experienced some of the lowest of lows as Jesus followers, yet they still lift their hands in worship. And when you refuse to allow the circumstances of your life to make you bitter, and in the darkness, if you can still continue to hang on to these two words, but God, it can change your life. When you look through Scripture, and I've got a few here that I want to read to you, then we'll wrap up. The first one is in, it's quite interesting in the book of Genesis, the beginning of humanity and so many stories about life and, 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 and how, how God saw you and I and the original plan that God had for us. And we get to Genesis chapter 7, it's the story of Noah and the ark. And I'm sure that, you know, most of us are familiar. If you aren't, just go and watch Evan Almighty and you'll understand it. But uh, uh, Genesis chapter 7, you understand that you, as you read in verse 10, it says this, that, that after seven days, the waters began to flood the earth. And then another 40 days, in verse 17, they were upon the earth, or it rained. And then the waters stayed on the earth for 150 days. So it starts off on seven. After seven days, it starts to rain. For 40 days, it rained nonstop. And then 150 days, that rain, that water stayed on the earth. And so you've got this, this, this ascending tragedy that's unfolding. Seven days rain, 40 days heavy rain, 150 days uh, uh, just water everywhere. And, and you guys in this region understand, you've, you, you, you know what this is like. 150 days of this floods the earth. And then there's a tipping point. And then it says, in, in chapter 8, it says after 150 days, the waters start to recede. After 40 days, Noah opens a window and releases a raven to see whether there's any land out there. The raven doesn't come back. Then after seven days, he opens another window and releases a dove and it never returns, which means it's found land to land on somewhere. So you have this little, it's like a mountain. Seven days, it starts, it's, it starts to rain. 40 days, it's heavy rain. 150 days, the, the rain is, is sitting on the earth, the flood waters. And then it, it starts to descend. 150 days, the water starts to recede. 40 days, the window opens, the raven goes. Seven days, the dove gets released. And then we understand that land is, is, is now evident and they, and they uh, uh, release uh, uh, all the animals. But right in between, right at the tip of the mountain between tragedy and triumph is Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. And it says this, but God remembered Noah. But God. To the left of the but God was tragedy. To the right was triumph. In between the two. With everything bad happening, there was a but God moment where God turned things around. And all through Scripture we read it. In Genesis 48 verse 21, Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you. 1 Samuel 23 verse 24, But God did not give David into Saul's hands. Psalm 73 verse 26, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Acts 3, 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful. And one of my favourites, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God. 
You know, this morning, I don't know where your life is at, but are we going to open up the altar and have a time to pray for people? I want to pray for you this morning if you're feeling like you're at a but God moment. But before we get to that, I'd ask the musicians to come, but how does that work this morning? Yeah, whatever. Dave's going to get up there. Look at him. You're a good man, Dave. But before we get to that, let me read that verse to you again, Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, one of the things that, uh, that my son and I have a lot of heart-to-hearts, uh, something we never used to have a lot of, but we do now. And, uh, and, and we talk very openly about faith and he asked to borrow my message version bible the other day so he could read it to his friends and uh, um, so he talked very openly about it and one of the things he said to me he goes you know why I've struggled connecting my life with God and I said no but I'd love to he goes because all my early years of growing up in church I heard the language you may be far from God this morning you may be far from God You may be far from God. You may be far from God. And I thought about it. and I think we use it all the time. People who aren't followers of of Christ, we go, oh, they're they're far from God at the moment. But, But here's the deal. Scripture tells us that whilst we were still in sin, whilst we're still addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, addicted to pornography, addicted to everything else that goes on in life, Jesus died for us. That doesn't sound like a, God who is dying for people who, because they're so far off. It sounds like a God who's dying for people right in amongst them. And I want to let you know this morning, no one's far from God. No one is far from God. Every single one of us are one decision away. That's all it takes, one decision. One decision in our heart that says, I need God, I need Jesus. I don't understand it. I've got a thousand questions about it. I don't agree with it all, but I know I need some help. And what you need to understand this morning, you may never have all the answers to all the questions you have. I have questions about my faith. I have questions about God. I have questions with what Owen shared this morning. I mean, how does that still happen when you've got people who love Jesus and sadness and pain still hurts them so much? And there's so many questions. But you can either allow your questions to chase you and to, or to lead you. Sorry, you can either allow your, allow your questions to fill you with doubt and keep you at a distance and keep you away. Or you can allow your curiosity to draw you into God. Because the Bible tells us that whilst we are still caught in our junk, Jesus died for us. That's how much He loves you this morning. So right now, I'm going to ask us just to close our eyes. And I'm going to pray a really simple prayer. And you may have prayed this before. And I'm not going to ask you to pray it out loud or put your hand in the air. I want this to be something you pray in your heart. This is a personal decision. This one decision today that could alter the rest of your life. And in your heart, I just want you to say these simple words. Jesus Help me. I give you my doubt. I give you my pain. I give you my sadness. I give you my emptiness. I give you my life today. Amen.